A little over six years ago, I painted my very first piece of furniture, and today I'm going to be fixing all of the mistakes that I made and giving it yet another fresh makeover. I can hardly believe that painting furniture has been my full-time job for the last six years, but here we are, and this is the piece that started it all. We had just moved into a new house and had no furniture, and a very tight budget, so I hit up our local thrift store and found this dining room set, which consisted of a little china cabinet and the matching buffet. I watched all of the painting tutorials that I could find on YouTube, grabbed some chalk paint and wax from Lowe's, had no idea what I was doing, but dove right in. Fast forward to today, this little china cabinet has had two very rushed and sloppy paint jobs has been dragged across Canada and is just ready for another fresh it up. I've got lots of brush stroke texture and patchy spots to deal with. I've got messy edges and painted over hardware. I don't have any room to drag this out to the garage right now, so I'm actually going to be working on it right here in my living room, dining room. It should be a relatively quick and easy process, so let's get started. I decided that I wanted to remove the decorative mullions from the doors. They're just a little too traditional for the new look that I want. So I removed the trim that held them and the glass in place and I'll re-secure this glass after I'm done painting with some clear silicone. My next step, if I were dealing with a piece of furniture that still had its original factory finish on it, would be to clean it with a good degreasing cleaner to get rid of any grease or old furniture polish residue that is on the surface that's going to inhibit my paint from making a good bond. But because this china cabinet is already painted and I happen to know that it was sealed with wax, I need to be a little more hardcore and break through that wax coat that's on top of the paint before I can clean it. To do that, I'm using some odorless mineral spirits, but plain old rubbing alcohol from the drugstore works great for breaking up furniture wax as well. I used a rag soaked in the solvent to scrub as much of the wax layer off as I could, and then I washed everything off with some degreasing cleaner.
next up is sanding and I happen to have a really expensive really fancy sander from surf prep and this is the kind of sander that you invest in when you are working on furniture or cabinetry as a full-time job if that's not you if you are just working on the odd diy here and there you can do sanding by hand absolutely go to the hardware store grab a sanding block in probably a 180 to 220 grit just to smooth out the surface or scuff up the surface if you're dealing with the original finish. But if you are gonna be doing DIYs somewhat frequently or you just wanna save yourself all of that elbow grease, I would say it's definitely worthwhile to pick up a small electric sander, whether that be a small triangle sander or a five inch random orbital sander. They're just going to cut back on the time and the amount of elbow grease that you are putting into your projects tenfold. One other thing that I wanna make note of is that my surf prep sander hooks up to my shop vac, so it collects a lot of the dust. And since I'm working inside my house today, that's a big factor. If you're gonna be sanding indoors, you're gonna get dust. So <laughs> if you can take pieces or your whole project outside to do the sanding or just keep your vacuum nearby so that you can kind of manage the dust collection as you go. I'm using some 180 grit paper to smooth out as much of the brush texture as I can and also remove any spots where I have a lot of paint built up from the previous paint jobs that's causing the doors to rub or just looks messy. And now that I've made a total mess, I am going to grab a fresh microfiber cloth just to wipe off any dust that is still on the surface. I'm going to soak my hardware in a solution to start breaking up that paint. And then I think I'm gonna call it a day. I collected all of the hardware pieces and tiny screws in this Pyrex dish so I didn't lose anything. And now I'm gonna let it all soak in some plain white vinegar and hot water from the kettle to start eating through all that gunk. I left my mixture sitting on the counter for the afternoon while I ran some errands. And then I broke out my barkeeper's friend and a brass wire brush. A little bit of scrubbing took all of the paint right off of these hinges and most of the tarnish off of the poles. When I was done, I rinsed everything in some clean water and just laid it out on the counter to dry. The next morning I was ready to start with my new paint job. I decided to refresh the inside of the cabinet with Fusion Mineral Paints Casement White and the outside of the cabinet is going little whale blue. Since I can't spray in my living room, I'm using my zebra square brush to get into all of the smaller spots. And I just found these Stallmeister rollers that give the best smooth finish that I have ever seen from a roller. They're a little more spendy than the ones that I usually pick up at Home Depot, but they give a way better result, so I definitely think they're worth it.
In between my coats of paint, I just tucked all of my stuff into a plastic grocery bag to keep anything from drying out. After getting two coats of white done on the inside, I rinsed out all my gear and then started putting some paint on the insides of the doors. Here is your friendly reminder that the first coat of paint is always terrifying and always looks absolutely terrible. That's completely normal. And I'm pretty sure that since I'm putting such a light color over this dark green, it's gonna take me three coats, which is also totally normal. So I've done two coats now on the back of the doors. And before I do my third and final coat, I'm just gonna give them a very light sand with some fine grit sandpaper just so that they're extra smooth. Before I got any further with my paint, I remembered that I needed to get all of that gross old felt out of the bottom of the drawer. So I took it outside and filled it up with some hot water. I let that sit for like a minute just to saturate into the felt. And then I dumped out all the excess water and let it keep sitting for about 10 minutes to loosen up the glue underneath. Then I grabbed a putty knife just to help me get the first corner started and the whole piece of felt peeled right up. Once this is dried out again, I'll just come back and sand out any of the glue residue and this drawer will be good to go. Back to painting, the white was dry enough to put some low tack painters tape down and then I just continued on with my beautiful baby blue. All right, it is day number three for this china cabinet and apparently I am dragging my heels, but I think today I can get it all wrapped up and put back together. I managed to get two coats of paint on everything last night, so I'm gonna do my smoothing sand and then do my final coat of paint. And I did remember while I was laying in bed last night that I completely forgot about the drawer out in the backyard. So I'm gonna drag my sander out there, sand the glue residue out of the bottom of that drawer and then get that painted as well. And then I think I can start reassembling.
I scraped off all the old paint around the edges of the glass and then put it back into the door frame. Then I just put a nice bead of clear silicone around the edge and that is gonna hold this glass in place. Wise Owl Furniture Salve, which is a hemp oil and beeswax wood conditioner to the inside of my drawer. 